the most powerful country in the world is attacking science. Also tonight, she's 11 and suing President Trump. You've been worried about climate change? Since kindergarten. Secret meetings at Mar-a-Lago raise new questions about who's getting access to the president and how. And Steve Hartman with the kid no one wanted. This man has no arms. Yeah. How is he going to play basketball? Until he showed them all. This is the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. Good evening, Scott's on assignment. I'm Anthony Mason, and this is our Western edition. Tens of thousands of scientists plan to mark Earth Day tomorrow by marching in hundreds of cities across the country and around the world. They'll be protesting cuts to research and programs to fight climate change. This comes as Americans are growing pessimistic about the environment. A CBS News poll today found just 12% believe the environment will improve for the next generation. 57% say it'll get worse. Dr. John LaPook begins our coverage. Eric Jarvis studies the neurobiology of language at New York City's Rockefeller University. His entire research team is going to tomorrow's March for Science. When the first time in recorded history, scientists have to get together to form a march in support of science, something serious is going on. What's different now? What's different is that the most powerful country in the world is attacking science, is attacking evidence-based logical thinking. That is a pretty serious attack, not on just science, but just on being human. Participants will range from geologists to geneticists, physicists to farmers, students to teachers. Their concerns include an 18% $6 billion proposed cut in funding for the National Institutes of Health denial of what they see as established science, such as the threat of climate change, and a changing immigration policy. Foreign-born scientists fill nearly half of U.S. postdoctoral research positions. Yeah. Cell biologist Lydia Viacomarov is one of the coordinators. Do you sense that the definition of what a fact is has actually changed? I worry about that. A fact is something which is testable and verifiable by a variety of means and a variety of people. We're confusing opinions and facts, beliefs and facts, and that is a mistake when the country tries to decide where it should take certain policy decisions. And for those people who say, oh, just stay in your lab, science and politics do not mix. Well, if you cut the funding, I can't stay in my lab. So I gotta come out. Anthony, for scientists like Jarvis to come out of their labs in March is a big deal. But the sentiment I'm hearing is, who better to defend science than the people who do it? Dr. John LaPook, thanks, John. A group of students has been fighting this battle for nearly two years. They're suing the federal government, demanding it do more to fight climate change. John Blackstone has their story. Avery McRae has been passionate about the environment for half a lifetime. You've been worried about climate change. Since kindergarten. Now, at 11, she is really getting serious. You signed on to sue the president. Yeah. To sue the government of the United States. Yeah. Trump is not doing anything to help stop climate change. He's a climate change denier, and we're going to prove that to the, to the world. McRae is one of 21 students suing the government, claiming it is violating their constitutional right to a healthy planet by not doing enough to limit the use of fossil fuels. The case, originally filed in Oregon in 2015, bears the name of lead plaintiff Kelsey Giuliana. It's a disgrace that the government has put its citizens and its younger generations into a position where we have to go to our court. The Justice Department tried to get it thrown out, but instead in November, U.S. District Court Judge Ann Aiken agreed to hear it. My mom's like, your case won and you're gonna move forward. And I screamed so loud and I was getting ready to cry, but I was like, no, no, I have to go back to class. The trial could start later this year. 16-year-old Ozzie Piper says, bring it on. You're taking on not just the federal government, you're taking on big oil companies, lobbyists. But it's not actually that intimidating. You have the biggest oil and gas companies against you. It's like, good, let them be defeated in court. Although their lawsuit
lawsuit may seem like a long shot, who better to fight for the future than those who will be here to see it? John Blackston, CBS News, Eugene, Oregon. President Trump is spending this weekend at the White House, but tonight there are new questions about the time he spent in Palm Beach and who he's met with. Here's Margaret Brennan. Of the 91 days that President Trump has been in office, he spent 25 of them at his Mar-a-Lago club in Florida, often mingling with members and guests. Since the election, the cost of membership has doubled to $200,000. I will tell you that our system is broken. Mr. Trump often railed against pay-to-play politics on the campaign trail. Well, and that's a broken system. Yet the access at Mar-a-Lago is unparalleled. Just last weekend, two former presidents of Colombia were guests and quietly met with Mr. Trump. Former President Andres Pastrana later tweeted, Thank you to President Trump for the cordial and very frank conversation about the problems and prospects in Colombia and the region. The two men are opponents of Colombia's current president, who has not yet met with President Trump, and the encounter was not on President Trump's public schedule. Five days later, White House spokesman Sean Spicer seemed surprised to hear about it. I know, I'm just saying I'm unaware of the stuff that, that... The White House later said the men, quote, briefly said hello when the president walked past them. Club members have posted photos with military officers and even with the president himself. Democrats in Congress have called for the White House to release names of visitors to all Trump properties, saying the American people have a right to know who has access to the president. These images of an open-air meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Abe caused controversy, coming just before the two condemned North Korea's missile test. The United States of America stands behind Japan, its great ally, 100%. The government accountability office is also probing security at the club and whether secure communications and classified information are adequately protected. Anthony, as we head into the summer, President Trump is expected to spend more time at another Trump property in New Jersey. Thanks, Margaret. Today, the attorney general said his department is considering charges against WikiLeaks, which has repeatedly posted classified government documents as well as campaign emails. More leaked documents from the CIA appeared online today. Justice correspondent Jeff Begase is following this. According to WikiLeaks, this is the 31-page user guide for a CIA device codenamed Weeping Angel. It can turn some Samsung TVs into surveillance tools with an implant designed to record audio from the built-in microphone. Posted online today, it is the latest release of classified documents stolen from U.S. government agencies. Those thefts include thousands of pages taken by Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, currently living at the Ecuadorian embassy in London, has all but dared U.S. officials to come after him. The Obama Justice Department decided not to, but new Attorney General Jeff Sessions says he has reopened the case. We've seen too many breaches, and hopefully we'll be able to um, uh, strike back against those who uh, violate our systems. CBS News has learned the CIA and the FBI believe the recent theft at the CIA was an inside job. Investigators say the materials were stolen from a highly secure section of the intelligence agency where it takes two people to access information. But even that security measure was apparently not enough. Michael Morell is a former acting director of the CIA. So many of these leaks in the last several years, how do you stop it from happening? We can't keep all of the information in one place. We need to spread it out. We have to have better rules about need to know, and if you don't have a need to know, you don't get access to the information. A former top Justice Department official says Assange could be prosecuted under a number of statutes, but any case will be, quote, messy. Anthony WikiLeaks argues that it is like a media organization and its activities are protected by the First Amendment. Justice correspondent Jeff Begay, thanks, Jeff. President Trump today weighed in on France's presidential election, predicting yesterday's Paris attack will help the far-right candidate Marine Le Pen in Sunday's vote. He told the Associated Press, quote, she's the strongest on borders and on what's been going on in France. Whoever is the toughest at the borders will do well in the election. Elizabeth Palmer has the latest on the attack in which one officer was killed 
and two others wounded. What made Karim Shurfi decide to open fire on police yesterday and die in the act remains a mystery. French-born and 39 years old, he had a criminal history of attacking the police. As officers secured the area around last night's shooting, they found a note by Shurfi's body defending ISIS. But in his last brush with the law, just two months ago, police said they found no evidence of radicalization. John Finley and his family from Kentucky were strolling down the busy Champs-Élysées yesterday evening when Shurfi opened fire just 10 feet away. My boys start running, my wife starts running, I get behind them, he's still shooting. He was aiming for those police. And he had to be, because he had a full magazine, we were shooting off rounds, and only one person was killed. Karim Shurfi may have been aiming squarely at the police, but his attack could have a serious impact on Sunday's presidential election. The extreme right-wing candidate Marine Le Pen seized on it to ramp up her tough law and order rhetoric, declaring a so-called battle plan to close the borders and impose harsh sentences on violent criminals. By contrast, the other front-runner, Emmanuel Macron from the center-left, appealed for calm, warning that an overreaction would be a victory for the terrorists. Today, on the spot where the 37-year-old policeman, Xavier Jugelet, was killed, Parisians paid their respects in a ritual that's now sadly familiar. President Trump and Marine Le Pen share views on immigration and terrorism, but is he right that this attack will clinch your victory? At the moment, Anthony, the race is simply too close to call. Elizabeth Palmer at the Arc de Triomphe. Thanks, Liz. Tonight, a 15-year-old girl from Tennessee who vanished with her teacher last month is back home. The pair was found yesterday in a cabin in rural California. The teacher, more than three times her age, was arrested. Manuel Bajorquez has the latest. I started crying immediately. Uh, finally, it's over. Finally, you know, she's in safe hands. Childhood friend Caleb Banks described the moment he and 15-year-old Elizabeth Thomas's family found out she was found safe. Everybody was hoping for the best, and, you know, the best is what we got. But it took nearly 40 days and a nationwide search for Thomas and her former science teacher, 50-year-old Tad Cummins. They were found in this remote Northern California cabin, nearly 2,500 miles from their hometown south of Nashville. Out of 1,500 tips, Griffin Barry, a local property manager, called in the want that led authorities to them. Someone showed me a picture and I was like, that's the guy. An affidavit alleges Cummins had been planning his time on the run with her. He had taken out a loan that previous week of approximately $4,500, filled out a prescription for Cialis, a drug used for erectile dysfunction, and booked hotel reservations out of state. We all love you. <laughs> I want to see you again. For weeks, people in her hometown put up flyers and held vigils. The efforts, I believe, of uh, getting everybody together, passing out thousands of ribbons, so I feel that that really helped uh, reach all the way to California. Griffin Barry not only gave police the right tip, he says he helped lure Cummins out of the cabin so police could arrest him. Anthony, the girl's family, says she is being evaluated and treated for emotional trauma. Manuel Bajorquez in Columbia, Tennessee. Thanks. And coming up next on the CBS Evening News, so much for the stiff upper lip. Britain's young royals open up about everything. And later, the hoop star who wouldn't take no for an answer.